What's up everybody, my name is Parasite. Welcome back to Rebuilding Nebraska. Today, we take on Oklahoma. Number two ranked Oklahoma. A little bit of a jumping competition. This is not gonna be easy. But Oklahoma are traditionally Nebraska's probably biggest rival. They were in the same conference for a long time and they're both pretty good for a long time. And so their games were always super exciting, super competitive and super important. So there was a huge rivalry that grew between them. Kind of faded off recently with Nebraska moving out to the Big Ten and kind of falling from relevance as well. Oklahoma pretty much stayed strong, but Nebraska haven't been very good. So that you know they haven't really played much, and I feel like any time they have played, they've not been super competitive. So yeah, the rivals died down a little bit, but I'm looking to bring it back. You know, I want to play at least one of our big rivals every year, and I thought it just started off with the biggest one, Oklahoma, Week Three. Yeah, this is gonna be a learning experience, especially because I'm gonna be trialing a new defense. It might seem a little bit rash considering we've, we're 2-0. and We've played decently well the first two seasons, the first two games. But defensively, I still wasn't very happy with what we we're doing. Just as, like, the way I like to play the game, I like to mainly use 4-3s. Obviously, we're using a 3-4 here, but I like 4-3. I like nickel. I like dime. And I have those in the playbook for Nebraska. And they just, the players don't suit it. You know, I, I would try to make it work, but we just don't have any pass rushers. None of our defensive ends are pass rushers. None of our outside linebackers are pass rushers. None of our defensive tackles are even pass rushers. So just we couldn't have success you know, really with a 4-3, especially once we're playing bigger teams like Oklahoma. And you know, I figured if I have any chance today, I need to get pressure. And I'm not going to do that rushing four with the defensive ends we have. You know, I've got to be creative, you know, find blitzes, do stuff like that. So basically all the formations I have defensively are with three down linemen. So, you know, 3 4, 3 3 5, stuff like that. You know, 3 4 2 6, whatever it's, I don't know. But yeah, a lot of those like that. But it's going to be a lot of, you know, zone blitzes and man blitzes and just trying to bring players from any everywhere just to try to confuse their offensive line and see if we can get a few sacks. Because I feel like if we don't get pressure against Oklahoma, they are going to tear us apart. They are very good. If we look at the, the preview, yeah, they're they're a little bit better than us. They're an A minus overall, an A offense. We have a C plus, an A minus defense. They're averaging 44 and a half points through their first two games. They have the number 14 total offense, the number three rushing offense, and their defense not bad either. Number 12 in total defense. Uh, their top passer is Williams with 26 completions and 53 attempts for 346 yards. So yeah, not dominant through the air, but. Their running game looks pretty good. Brooks, their leading rusher with 242 yards. Coming off a 156-yard game with two touchdowns and a receiving touchdown. So he looks to be their big threat offensively. Woods, currently their leading receiver. Obviously us, Martinez, 194 yards so far. 201 on the ground. Allen, our leading receiver. They have played Louisiana Monroe, and they smashed them 65-7. to That is terrifying. And then they played West Virginia last week and beat them 24-7. to So, yeah, their defense is pretty good. Their offense, not bad either, because West Virginia are not a bad team. Obviously, we're coming off two big wins, that really amazing win against Wyoming in overtime, and then a more comfortable win against a worse Southern Miss team, but it wasn't comfortable to start. We ended up getting 24-10 win. We looked really good in the second half, but yeah, it was not looking like it was going to be that comfortable come about halftime. And in terms of injuries, they're actually missing their main receiver. Their best receiver, Mims, is out for three weeks, so that's definitely a loss for them, but... They have a lot of good talent. So even though it's a big loss, they've got plenty of players to step up in this place. We have no key injuries, so that's really good. Looking at their roster, yeah, they got a little bit of talent. They're pretty freaking good. The best player is apparently their kicker, but yeah, it's it's probably Benito, their pass rusher. They are very good defensive ends. Their defensive line in general is very good. Our offensive line might be having a lot of troubles today. I have to do some screens, some, I don't know, quick passes, quick slants, stuff like that. You know, try to See if we can get an effective run game to keep them honest. Not let their pass rushers just, you know, rush without even having to worry about the run game. They got Benito and Thomas on the edges. They got Redmond and Winfrey in the middle. Mims, obviously, their best offense player is out. So that's pretty big. But they've got Stogner. He's probably going to be their top receiver as their tight end. Good receiving tight end. I got a good fullback. So we might be expecting some, you know, eye formation, stuff like that. Look to pound the rock because they do apparently like to run the ball. 
Uh, in terms of quarterback, they've kind of got two on 87, but I think Caleb Williams, the true freshman, is their starter. He's got a lot more speed than Spencer Rattler. Really good agility and acceleration as well. Not a bad passer either. Really strong arm. 94 throw power, 82 throw accuracy. Got good elusiveness. Awareness is a little low, so that could be an issue. Rather in comparison, pretty similar arm. Not as strong, but pretty accurate still. But a lot better awareness, but not quite the physical gifts. So Williams is their leading passer, so I'm assuming he's going to be their number one today. Running back, we already saw Kennedy Brooks is pretty good. He was not dynamic pace or anything like that. He's not an actual, like, a big trucker, 73 trucking. Decent break tackle, though. Pretty good elusiveness, good ball carrier vision. So he's just going to take what's given to him and a little bit more, probably. And they got Gray behind him, who's pretty good as well. Uh, fullback Reddit's all pretty good. Watch receivers. They don't have Mims, but they still have really good receivers. Weiss is going to be their number one, 87 overall. Behind him, we got Hazelwood and Woods, both 84s. Williams in 80, 78, 78. Yeah, they, they're really good still. Tight end, Stogner. Got a good backup there with Willis as well. Their offensive line, very good. That's why I felt like I had to get creative because we don't have the pass rusher to be able to beat these guys. Swenson, really good left tackle. Hayes, really good left guard. Congo, okay center, 82 overall. Right guard also, just okay. But still, like compared to our players, they're really good. And then they got a really good, they have two really good right tackles, Robinson and Morris. I mean, if I was them, I'd play one of those two at guard. That's just me. They got really good strength. They could definitely do it. In terms of defense, we already know they got a really good pass rush. Their backups as well are very good. So they can do a lot of rotation and keep them fresh and still be very dangerous. Interior, also pretty good, pretty good, pretty deep. In terms of linebackers, they've got uh, White and uh, that, that guy. As their two middle linebackers and Asamoa, their best linebacker. Not great speed, but pretty decent tackling ability. 88 tackling, good play rec, pretty good coverage as well. So if we had a speedy tight end, we might be able to take advantage of his lack of speed. But we definitely have the opposite of that. So yeah, I don't know if we can really take advantage of you know the deficiencies, deficiencies he has, unfortunately. Uh, their cornerback's probably the weakest part of their team. Their number one, uh, Woody Washington. Great name, by the way. Good speed, 84 overall. Davis and Graham behind him. McCutcheon, Eaton, and Dennis as running it out. But not the greatest unit, but still better than the last two teams we played. And we've still struggled to pass against the last two teams we played, so it's not going to be easy. Safety's pretty good as well. 86 fields, starting senior, free safety. 87, Turner Yell, their starting senior. Strong safety. Obviously, really good kicker with... Really good kick power. 95 kick power, 95 accuracy, 95 awareness. I don't know if that has an effect, but he's got it. So he can basically hit him from anywhere, and he's going to score him. So, yeah, if they get anywhere close to the end zone, it's going to be at least three points. And they've got a good punter as well, but I don't expect to see much of him. Really strong leg, though. So if he does have to punt, he's going to switch field position. So, yeah, we're going to have to probably have to drive some long fields if we're going to get some points. And that's not going to be easy against Oklahoma's defense. So let's get into this. Toughest game on the calendar, biggest rivalry have, and it's only week three. Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan, innovation that excites. The children of the corn have invaded Lincoln. It is a sea of red, an always sold-out Memorial Stadium, one of the most intimidating venues in all of college football, and Nebraska set to defend its home turf. We've done all we can do here. Time to tee it up. Let's send it out to Brad and Kirk for the call. David and I will be with you at halftime. And the fans are ready for this one. It's time for the Sooners versus the Huskers in this classic rivalry game. And we are underway. The Memorial Stadium is going to host one of the biggest rivalries in college football. And Nebraska is going to start on defense. After a first down carry by their quarterback, Caleb Williams, they're going to stay in this pistol with four wide. It's going to be a handoff this time. Left-hand side, it's going to give it out five. After a five-yard carry by the running back on first down, they come out with a split backfield. 
two running backs to his left and right. It's going to be a faked handoff. It's going to be an inverted veer, and he's going to have a ton of space. And Caleb Williams, 22-yard run. He's already got over 30 yards, and we're only a couple minutes into the game. Not a great start so far for this Nebraska defense. I figured Oklahoma was going to be hard to defend, especially with the running ability of their quarterback, and that's been the case so far. But he can also throw the ball. Seven yards this time to Weiss. First completion. Second and three now. They're going to stay with this four wide from the pistol. And is it going to be a run? It's going to be a pass. It's going to be a blitz from Nebraska, and it's going to get home, but he breaks the tackle. But the second man gets there. We knew we'd have to break to blitz to get to the quarterback, and we get to him. It's not Robinson who actually gets the cleanup sack. But it's the blitz who gets there that forces it. He doesn't bring him down, but eventually we do bring him down. And now it's third and nine. Third and nine. A stop here for Nebraska would be huge. They're going four wide. Receiver's going to go in motion. It's going to be a pass. Only a three-man rush for Nebraska. They're going to find the man in the flats. He's going to get the first down. And he's going to break a couple tackles. I think it's the running back who gets a big gain. 26 yards. Kennedy Brooks. Looks like it should have gone nowhere. But instead, he gets 26 yards on a big third and nine. Nebraska could have gotten out of that situation forcing a punt. But instead, it's first and goal for Oklahoma. Out of the pistol. They're going to look to throw. Four-man rush. And he's going to look for the corner of the end zone. It's going to be intercepted. They couldn't get the stop on third down. But he looks to force it in coverage on first and goal. And it's intercepted. Who is that? Who is that that got that? I don't even know who that was. I don't know our team yet. It was free safety Deontay Williams who got the huge interception. He's one of our best defensive players. And he showed it off there. Nebraska coming out with the pistol from the bunch. He's going to have to throw it. He's going to get destroyed. We know they have a good pass rush. And on the first offensive play for Nebraska, they get a sack. There's only been one offensive play. And they're already behind the sticks. Second and 15. They're kicking him out. Wide receivers in tight. And it's going to be another throw. He's got to get out quick if he's going to, going to. He looks for his man near the sideline, and it sails out of bounds. Third and 15. This is not going to be easy, especially with the pass rush Oklahoma had. Third and 15. It looks like it might be an Oklahoma blitz. They've got some safeties coming close to the line of scrimmage. Out of shotgun. It is a blitz from the left-hand side. He's going to get the ball out. It's going to be the tight end, but it's not going to be enough. But there is going to be a flag. Here's to see what this is. If this is on the defense, it could be a first down, but instead it's holding. They should probably decline that. They did decline it. It was forced to punt. Nebraska was forced to punt. So it's going to be Oklahoma's ball again. And Nebraska were able to stop them from getting points on their first drive, beginning that huge interception. But they couldn't capitalize it on offense and get anything from it. And Caleb Williams is going to take off again. It's seven yards on first down. Big third and one now. They're coming out with two running backs in the backfield. So Nebraska have pinched their defensive line in. And it's going to be a fake handoff. He's going to look to throw. He's going to have a man in the flats. And he's going to have so much space. I just praised our coverage, but he was there was no one close there. He had 10 yards of separation. He gets 12 yards on third down. After they move the chains on third and one, they've got another first down. They're staying in this four wide. They really like this four wide set. And it's going to be a fake handoff and a blitz from Nebraska, but it's not going to get there. He's going to have all the time he needs to find Weiss for a 15-yard reception on first down. After a stop for no yards on first down, they're going to come out with a bunch to the right-hand side from the pistol. It's going to be a four-man rush for Nebraska. It's going to find a man across the middle. He's going to be about six or seven. It's Mike Woods with his first reception of the game. Third and three now. They're going to spread it out. Stay in this pistol. And it's going to be a throw. A quick throw to the left-hand side. And Weiss is able to get the conversion. They cannot stop them on third down. First and ten now. They can't rely on red zone interceptions to keep them in this game. Come out with two running backs in the backfield. It's going to be a handoff to the right-hand side. He's going to get to the edge and cut it up. And get about nine. Good run on first down by Kennedy Brooks. Second and one now. Entire playbook is open for Oklahoma. they got a, a trio to the left-hand side. Running back's going to come in motion. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. He's going to look to get to the edge. And he's not going to get there. He's going to get drilled in the backfield for a two-yard loss. Mark Heldes Mook with a big tackle for loss. Big play here. Third and two. Four wide. The defensive line is going to pinch in. Running back stays in the backfield, but it's not going to be a handoff. It's going to be a screen, and it looks like he's probably going to get there. But no! He doesn't! He only gets a yard! What a stop by the Nebraska defense, but they're going to go for it. Fourth and two. Fourth and two. Three wide receivers out wide, but it looks like Nebraska is expecting a run. They've got a goal line defense on, and it's going to be a false start. That's probably going to force Oklahoma to kick the field goal. That's a win for Nebraska. They lost four yards on a first down carry, and then an incompletion. So now it's third and 14. A lot to do here, and he's going to look to throw. Four-man rush from Oklahoma. He's not going to have much time, and he's going to get hit in the backfield. This offensive line is completely outmatched. This Nebraska offense looks like it's going to need a miracle if they're going to do anything. They've struggled to even gain positive yardage. Nebraska, four wide. In the pistol. They're nearly at midfield already. And it's going to be a four-man rush. But he's going to find his running back out of the backfield. He's going to get a good six, seven, eight yards on first down. After a nine-yard carry on first down, they have a second and one. Two running backs in the backfield. And it's going to be a handoff up the middle. He's going to get to the edge and stiff arm a defender. 
He's going to get the first down. Eight yards for Kennedy Brooks. I don't see any way we stop this team or do anything offensively even. I think if Nebraska stands any chance, they're going to have to look for turnovers. Get aggressive on defense. Look to blitz them. Look to cause some errant passes. Or just force them into screens like that. A little mid-screen, but defense is there. and He doesn't get anything on first down. Third and five. In the shotgun. Four wide. It's going to be a blitz for Nebraska, but they're going to pick it up. And they're going to find a man in the flats. But he's out of bounds. He doesn't get it. I think he would have been short anyways. Are they going to settle for the field goal? Looks like they are. Another big win for the Nebraska defense. So far, it's been three trips to the Nebraska side of the field for the Oklahoma offense, but they've only got six points from it. That is big for the Nebraska defense. They need to be the, doing that too because the offense has shown nothing today. They need to get something started on this drive. They come out in the split from the shotgun. Two running backs in the backfield. Yant's going to get the fake. It's going to be a, a triple option. He's going to find Ramir Johnson, and they're going to get positive yardage. I'll take it. It's going to be a big one too. He breaks a tackle, and he gets 29. That is what we needed. At that point, we had negative four offensive yards. And now we've got 25. I'll take it. First and 10 now. Stand in the shotgun. It's going to be a throw. They're going to blitz. It's going to be a quick quick slant, it looks like. Manning gets the reception. Five yards on first down. At least they're not already in negative yardage on first. That's what's happened the last couple of drives. Looks like they're going to stay in the same shotgun look. And it's going to be a handoff up the middle. He's going to have space. He's going to break a tackle. And he's going to get out to the 26, 27-yard line. 14 yards for Amir Johnson. They're in field goal range. Nebraska is on Oklahoma's side of the field for the first time today. They're going to stay in shotgun. It's worked for them so far. And it's going to be a pass. It's going to be a blitz from Oklahoma. He's going to look to rush out. He's going to look to run to the left-hand side. But he's sacked for an eight-yard loss. Looked like they had quick slants on. But either nobody got open or he got too scared to throw it. And he gets hit in the backfield. they got to be careful to not get knocked out of field goal range at this point. Second and 18. Four wide. They have a lot to do if they're going to get anything from this possession. And he's going to look to take off again. He's going to fumble! No! They finally get something going on offense, and they fumble it away. Agent Martinez has looked absolutely terrified every time he's dropped back to pass. He's immediately looking to run. He doesn't even look to pass the ball. Oklahoma are going to have a chance now. they got a turnover, and now they want to turn it into seven if they can. It's going to start pretty well. A 30-yard reception on first down. After that 30-yard completion, they're staying this pistol. Two running backs in the backfield. They'd like to run it from this look. It's going to be a read option. He's going to cut it up. He's going to have a lot of space. He's going to cut back, and he's going to get the first down. Looks like Nebraska has almost no answer for this Oklahoma offense anywhere outside the red zone until I say that. They send a blitz, and he hits Kennedy Brooks in the backfield. They lose four on first down. Third and five. Oklahoma can do anything here. They can run. They can pass. They've got four wide out of shotgun, and it's going to be a pass. Four-man rush from Oklahoma, and he's going to find his receiver along the sideline. Woods gets 15. Caleb Williams, 11 of 13 from the day, and one of those incompletions was the interception. He's going to look to run another speed option, but he gets hit in the backfield this time. He loses four. But we did that last time, and they still converted. Ben still with a big tackle for loss. Second 14 now. They're going to come out in this pistol. Two running backs in the backfield. Three wide receivers out wide. Second like my audible, and it's going to be a pass. Four-man rush for Nebraska. They're not going to get there. He's going to have plenty of time, and he's going to find a diving receiver over the middle. Weiss gets 12. Sets up a very easy third and two for, for Oklahoma. Third and two. Big play. They're going to come out four wide. And like I said before, they can do anything here. It's going to be a, an option or not an option, a screen, a wide receiver screen. I don't know if I agree with that call. They could have run the ball. They could have done a normal pass play, and they probably would have converted. But I feel like you're playing into Nebraska's hands by you know, running a screen there. They get the stop. Are they going to settle for three once again? This Nebraska defense is a mystery. It feels like Oklahoma's offense can do anything they want until they get to the red zone. Then Nebraska battens down and stops them. You know, they've got three field goals so far keeping this Nebraska offense in it. But eventually, they're going to have to do something. They're going to stay in the shotgun look, and it's going to be a handoff to the left. Ramir Johnson is not going to get much. Third and 10, Nebraska desperately needs this conversion. they got four wide. Running back stays in the backfield. This is surely going to be a pass. It kind of has to be. It's going to be a blitz from Oklahoma, and he's going to get off to the running back. He's going to fight, and he's going to get the first down. Ramir Johnson's showing some heart. Agent Martinez only gets three yards on a first down rush. They're going to come back out in shotgun. Two tight ends on the field. Second and seven. And he's going to look to throw. It's going to be a blitz from Oklahoma. And he's nearly going to get picked off. Looks for Allen. And he gets knocked down by Turner Yell. Third and seven now. Nebraska's only conversion has been on this drive. On third down. Big third and seven. Got a trip to the right-hand side in the bunch. And he's going to look to throw. Only a four-man rush from Oklahoma. But it's going to get there. Their pass rush has just completely overwhelmed this Nebraska offense. And AJ Martinez looks incapable of doing anything back there. He's not been able to run. He's not been able to throw. This 
offense has been completely inept. After a 60-yard completion on first down, they come out in the shotgun. Second and four. Minute 30 seconds left. He's going to throw. Four-man rush from Oklahoma, or from Nebraska. He's going to take off. I think they need to spy him because the pass rush isn't getting there, and they're not even holding their lane. So he's got plenty of space to run with the ball once he can't find a receiver downfield. First and 10 now for this Oklahoma offense. They're going to start under center, but this is probably going to be another pass. Minute 15 seconds on the clock. It is going to be a pass. Looks like Nebraska are only rushing three at this point. They're not getting there at four, so might as well just send three and put more people into coverage. Third and two now. Four wide for Oklahoma from the shotgun. They can still run the ball here because the first down stops the clock. They are going to look to throw. He's going to find a man. A little curl route from, I think it was a running back, Kennedy Brooks it was. And he gets the four yards necessary to get the first down. They're going to rush to the line, and they're going to stay in this four wide look. 54 seconds left. They still got one timeout left. Still only a three-man rush from Nebraska. They're either going to have to send like five or six or three because four man isn't getting there. There's no point to doing it at this point. Second and four now. Out of the pistol. And it's going to be a blitz from, from Nebraska. And they're going to look to beat him long. But no! What an interception! Is that Jojo Demon? Of course it's Jojo Demon. What a pick that was! Showing off the range and the ball skills. Steals some points from Oklahoma. You got to give a lot of credit to this Nebraska defense. They've made some big plays when they've needed to. Nebraska's offense just needs to do something. There's 35 seconds left. We'll see how aggressive they get. If they turn this over, Oklahoma are going to get points. But they get 7 yards on first down. They're not going to use their timeout. They're just going to rush to the line, it looks like. 25 seconds left. They they don't want to give Oklahoma the ball back. So they're going to not take any timeouts just yet. See if they can get this first down first. And it's going to be another pass. Adrian Martinez is going to look to take off. He's going to hit the backfield. He fumbles! No! That's the worst possible thing he could have done. Adrian Martinez, with his second fumble of the game, just handed Oklahoma even more points. You got to feel for this Nebraska defense. They've been doing whatever they need to, but Nebraska's offense at every single moment lets them down. Second and 10, 11 seconds left. We'll see what Nebraska does here. Looks like they're bringing a strong safety down. Are they going to blitz him? It's worked the last couple of times. They're going to blitz him, but they're going to pick it up. Going to find a man in the flats. He's going to get near the first down, third and inches, but the clock continues to run. And they're out of timeouts, or they just took their last one. Okay, they just took their last time out. They're going to settle for the field goal. It's going to be a yet another field goal, but, I mean, they can get no more field goals from here on out. I don't think Nebraska's getting 12 points. And Nebraska are just going to look to deal it out. There's no reason to do anything here. All they're going to do is just give Oklahoma some more points. Jojo Dumont tried to steal some points away from Oklahoma, but Adrian Martinez wasn't having any of it. This might be the worst offensive performance I've ever seen in this half. Nebraska have only had 40 yards of offense so far. They've had one drive that looked promising, and Adrian Martinez ended up fumbling it away. Now they're going to see if they can get something going from the shotgun. It's going to be a read option. Adrian Martinez runs over a man. Finally showing a little bit of something today. Thought he was going to fumble. What we've seen so far. Good first down carry by Adrian Martinez. Now they got another first and ten. They're getting a little bit of progress at least. Stay in the shotgun. It's going to be a fake and a throw. And he's got a lot of space. I think that's Samori Toure. He's got one man to beat, but he's not going to beat him. He doesn't have the most speed. But a big 48-yard reception. That's more yards than they had the entire first half. Nebraska finally back on Oklahoma's side of the field. Now they just need to not fumble it away. And pistol. Two tight ends on the field. They're going to hand it off the middle. Ramir Johnson It's going to have space. In about 11 or 12, he's going to get back up, but they're going to take him down. He gets 11 yards on the carry. First and goal now. First and goal. They really need to get seven because I don't see the offense getting down here much more often. So they need to take advantage of this. Coming out in pistol. Two tight ends to the right-hand side. They're going to keep handing it off. Ramir Johnson up the middle. Gets a few. Four yards. Second and about three or three yards, I think. Second and goal. Nebraska come out. Two running backs in the backfield. Oklahoma in goal line. See what happens here. It's going to be a faked handoff. He's going to get hit immediately. Probably should have handed that off. Loses four. Third and about six now. They could have got a you know, yard or two. That would have set up a really comfortable third and goal. But now they pretty much have to throw it. And it's going to be a bunch of the right-hand side. They are going to throw it. He's going to look for the end zone. He's got a man in the corner. And it's seven. Oliver Martin gets the touchdown reception. Agent Martinez finally gets a second to throw, and he finds his man in the court of the end zone. Oklahoma have had four trips and only ended up with 12 points. Nebraska's first time there, they got seven. That was big. That was massive. Nebraska absolutely needed that. Their offense came alive after halftime against Southern Miss. Looks like they're going to do it again today. At least so far they have. It's going to be a handoff up the middle for Oklahoma. Defense has been pretty stout so far. Jeremiah Hall gets his first carry. Gets four yards. All right, second and six. Standing four wide from shotgun. Running back at the backfield. It's going to be a quick throw. A little screen, but he's not getting anywhere. Their screens have not worked today. Woods loses a yard. Now it's third and seven. This would be huge for Nebraska if they can get a stop here. And with the you know way the offense is playing, they might be back in this game. 
Third and seven. Trip to the left for Oklahoma. This is surely going to be a throw. Only a three-man rush from Nebraska. And he's going to look for his man. He's got him short, but he's going to fight for it, but he's not going to get there. Fourth and one. It'd be risky for Oklahoma to go for it here, but, you know, he might still do it. Doesn't look like it, though. A huge stop for Nebraska defense. Now, can Oklahoma's offense take advantage of the momentum and possibly take the lead here? First and ten. They're coming out in the pistol. Two tight ends. And it's going to be a handoff up the middle. Ramir Johnson. He's been really good so far today. He gets another seven-yard carry. Second and three now. Still in the pistol. Yant joining Ramir uh, Martinez. Not Martinez. Joining Ramir in the backfield. Ramir Johnson. It's going to be a handoff to Ramir. He's going to hit the edge. He's going to have a lot of room. A lot of room. And he gets to the sideline. 19 yards for Ramir Johnson. This running game is finally getting going. After two huge carries by Ramir. They knock him out in the pistol again. Two tight ends to the right-hand side. And they're going to stick with the run game. Why not? Ramir Johnson the left-hand side. He's got more space. He's got more room, and he gets another big run. 16 yards on the counter. Where has this Nebraska offense come from? They're now doing whatever they want to this Oklahoma defense after not being able to do anything in the first half. Are they going to hand off to Ramir again? Yeah, why not? Another carry, but they actually stop him this time. He only gets a yard. Second and nine now. In shotgun, two wide receivers, two running backs in the backfield, and it's going to be a handoff to Yant. He's going to get a lot of space. He's going to hit his own man, but he's still going to get a good gain. First down. I think we're in goal down. Big run by Yant. First and goal from the eight-yard line. This this is amazing. I don't know where this come from. But they got, what, one tight end on the right, one tight end on the left, two wide receivers on the left. Tight end goes in motion. It's going to be another handoff to Ramirez? Of course it is. Looks to run up the middle. Doesn't get a lot this time. It's four yards. This is about, what, second and goal from about the five or four-yard line. Second and goal now. Still in the pistol. Two running backs in the backfield. Tight end. Looks like Oklahoma in goal line. And they're going to look to throw. He's going to get it off. He's got a man on the slant route. Samori Toure. He had a big reception earlier, and now he gets a touchdown. Nebraska is suddenly in the lead. What an amazing start to the second half for Nebraska offense. They drove pretty much the entire length of the field using the run game. Then they surprised him, looked through the ball, and got in the end zone and nearly an interception off the receiver's hands. And that could have been a pick six. That would have been massive. Second and ten for Oklahoma now. This game has just completely changed around. Where has this come from? be a throw and he's going to complete it about nine yards third and inches mario williams gets about nine or ten after halftime this game completely flipped on his head we are now in front and oklahoma have it third and inches two running backs in the backfield receiver goes in motion Let's see what they do here it's going to be a handoff of the middle blitz from nebraska and they're going to stop him they hit kennedy brooks in the backfield for a loss it's quentin nelson or garrett nelson whatever your name is it's garrett nelson and they're going to punt again fourth and one if it wasn't for some stout red zone defense in Nebraska, this could have already been a complete blowout in Oklahoma's favor. But instead, Nebraska currently have all the momentum and the lead and the ball. And pistol. They're going to look to run again. Ramir Johnson up the middle. They started to slowly key on this run. Only two yards from Ramir Johnson this time. They might need to look to flip things up and go through the air a little bit. Second and eight. They're going to come out in the shotgun. And it's going to be another handoff, but they get hit in the backfield. They are sending the blitz now. They're not letting us run the ball on them anymore. They're going to force Adrian Martinez to prove he can beat him through the air. And I'm not sure he can. They're going to come out in the shotgun. Third and nine. Tight. In tight. Three wide receivers. One tight end. Running back in the backfield. It's going to be a throw. Only a four-man rush from Oklahoma. He's going to find his man on the curl route. And he's going to get the first down. Samur Toure. Once again. Second and ten. Near midfield. Two tight ends. Two receivers. Ramir Johnson in the backfield. And it's going to be a counter run. He's going to have some space. They, looked, they expected the pass this time. But instead, they ran the ball. We've got to keep him guessing. Big third and, third and nine. Nebraska in the shotgun. Trips to the right-hand side in the bunch. Everyone from Oklahoma is in the box. And it's going to be a throw. Only a four-man rush. He's going to have time. But it's going to run out. But he's going to find his man. Omar Manning gets the 13-yard reception. And the drive continues. Big third and five now. Nebraska in the pistol. Two wide receivers to the right-hand side. And it's going to be a throw. It's like a four-man rush. He's going to look for his man. It's nearly intercepted. That would have been apocalyptic because that could have been a pick six. Adrian Martinez nearly gave away three points of their own and gave Oklahoma seven. But we do get a field goal. We, we extend our lead, but it's still only a one-score game. And Oklahoma are going to look to still run the ball. They've done really well, and he absolutely trucks a couple defenders. 17 yards by Kennedy Brooks. Second and 10 now. Oklahoma in the shotgun. Four wide receivers after an incompletion on first down. Wide receiver's going to come in motion. He's going to get the handoff. He's going to look to hit the edge, but he's not going to get there. We set the edge well, and he loses yards. Third and 11 now. Ben Still, the big tackle for loss. His second of the game. Third and 11. Oklahoma, at this point, drastically need this. 
You got three wide receivers running back in the backfield. Surely they're not going to run the ball, though. Only a three-man rush for Nebraska, and they're going to complete it, but for basically no gain. Only three yards, and I think they have to punt again. This Nebraska defense has been locked down in this second half. They started only rushing three and just you know, keeping everything in front of them. And Oklahoma haven't been able to beat them deep. And so they've not been able to get their first downs. Ramir Johnson looks to hit the edge this time. We lose on first down. Loses four yards. This running game was working pretty well a couple drives ago. It's completely falling apart. Oklahoma is not allowing Nebraska to run the ball anymore. They're going to force Adrian Martinez to beat him with his arm. Can he do it? Four wide. He's going to look to throw. On second and 14. He's going to find his man on the crossing route. And it's Omar Manning with 10. Really good gain. Now it's only third and four. Big third and four here. Nebraska coming out in the shotgun. Wide receivers in tight. They're letting all the time run off the clock. Three, two. They're going to snap it. He's going to look to throw. Four-man rush. He's going to look for his man. He's got him wide open. It's Austin Allen. He breaks the tackle. And he gets even more yards. Gets to the midfield. The time continues to tick off the clock. Oklahoma desperately needs a stop here. Second and five for Nebraska. And they're coming out in the pistol. Two tight ends, two, two on tight ends on the field. Two wide receivers to the left. It looks to be a read option. But he gets absolutely blasted in the backfield. These option plays have not worked even in like once. Oklahoma have taken their first time out. They really want to get a stop here. Third and nine. First down will be huge for Nebraska. And it's going to be a pass. It's going to be a blitz from Oklahoma. And they're going to hit him in the backfield. And he's going to fumble. His third lost fumble of the game. Adrian Martinez's lack of ball security has been just killer for Nebraska. They're giving Oklahoma the ball in good field position. They were doing so well. And then they do that. Now Oklahoma are in prime position to win this game. Second and four, in the pistol, three wide receivers to the right-hand side. Running back stays in the backfield, and it's going to be a pass. Three-man rush. Look for the sideline. He's going to complete it. going to be about four or five, or eight even, and it's first down. First and ten now. Three is not going to be enough for Oklahoma. They need to get in the end zone. They've not done it yet today. They really need to. It's going to be a blitz from Nebraska, and he's going to get the completion. Four yards. Second and six. It looks like the ball game is going to come down to this drive. From the pistol, three wide receivers to the left-hand side. He's going to hand it off. And he's going to get a few, but still, it makes it third and four. Third and four now. Oklahoma have two downs to get the first down. So they can run the ball here. Tight end's going to go in motion. Two tight ends to the right-hand side. He's going to look to throw. Only a three-man rush. It's like man coverage for Nebraska. They're going to get to him, and they get them sacked. That might be one of the first sacks of the game, and it's massive. They lose six, and now they're going to rush to the line of scrimmage. Fourth and nine. This is the ball game, and he's going to snap it. They get a stop here. The game's over. He's going to look for the end zone. And Oklahoma get the touchdown and take the lead. And there's only 40 seconds left. Oklahoma are going to go to two. Go for two. See if they can make it a three-point game. We've got four wide receivers. One running back in the backfield. It's going to be a throw. And he's going to have plenty of time. Four-man rush. He's going to look to run. And he's going not to get there. He gets taken down short. A field goal is going to be enough. But Nebraska barely been able to throw the ball today. And they've only got 40 seconds left. Fortunately, they do have all three timeouts. And this game is going to rest on the shoulders of Adrian Martinez. If it wasn't for his three fumbles, they probably wouldn't be in this situation right now. But they are. And now they got to see if they can get a field goal. 40 seconds left. All three timeouts. They're going to be throwing the ball. We know Oklahoma's pass rush. And it gets there. They're going to have to take a timeout. Second and 18 now. What can they do? Second and 18. They desperately need 9 or 10 yards. Just get a comfortable third down. They've got two downs left to do this. In tight. They're going to look to throw. He's going to have time, but it's going to run out, and he's going to throw it out of bounds. Third and 18. Third and 18 now. Ball game is getting really tight. 31 seconds left. Looks like it's only a three-man route. They're keeping everybody in the block, and he's going to drop it. It's fourth and 18. The game on the line. I think we might have just lost this at the end. Fourth and 18. Game on the line. It's now or never. It's going to be a... a pass. It's got to be. Looks down the line, and he finds his tight end! Austin Allen gets the first down! It's still on! Only 22 seconds left. They've got two timeouts. They're going to rush back to the line of scrimmage. they got to get this off quick. They can't waste a single second, and he can't get sacked. Looks for his man on the corner route! It's Amori Toure, and he gets out of bounds! 17 seconds left. First and 10. 40-yard line. Trips to the right-hand side. From the shotgun. He's going to look to throw. Will he have time? He will. He'll find his man. But he only get a few. They have to use their first timeout. Or the second timeout. One left. 11 seconds left. They're nearing field goal range. Second and three. 11 seconds left. Only one timeout. They need the first down or to get out of bounds. Big play here. 
Bunch to the right. He's going to look to throw. He can't get sacked. And he finds his man. And he threw Amir Johnson 12 yards. Seven seconds left. They might just take the field goal here. There's seven seconds left. Can they get a playoff? We'll see. I doubt they're going to take this play. I think they're just going to let the clock run down and take the field goal. It'd be too risky to go for a play here. And it looks like that's going to be the case. Two seconds left. They're going to take their timeout. Nebraska looking for the game-winning field goal. 39 yards away from a historic victory. It looked like it was over. Fourth and 18. But they complete the pass, and they get in the field goal range. Now it's on the shoulders of Connor Colt. If he makes this, they beat their biggest rival, number two in the nation, in the most dramatic of fashions. Oh, it's all down to this. Two seconds left. And he's gone for it. The kick is up. And it is good! Nebraska win! Nebraska pull off a miracle from 4th and 18 on like their own 20-yard line with 20 seconds left to a game-winning field goal as time expires. It doesn't get any better than that. And Samori Toure gets player of the game. Every time they needed a big play, it seemed to be him that stepped up. He gets 96 yards receiving. And it's Austin Allen as well. You got to give him credit. He got the, the completion. Or he caught the ball on that 4th and 18. But really, it's all down to their defense. If it wasn't for the amazing play of their defense, especially in the red zone, this would have been a blowout. Oklahoma would have had 40. But instead, they only get 18. And Nebraska, in the last seconds, pulls off the miracle and wins it with a game-winning field goal with no time on the clock. 20-18. to 18, Nebraska beat their biggest rival, Oklahoma, number two in the nation. I don't have the words. We've only played three games, and I think I may need a heart transplant. We've had two amazing games so far. One against Wyoming, the second against number two, Oklahoma. And in a game where he looked like he was completely out of his depth, he was sacked eight times. There was times he looked like he was a deer in the headlights. He didn't know what to do. He was running around, just trying to get away from the pressure. But when we needed him to, he stepped up. You know, He was pretty efficient, 18 of 25. 221 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He could have got picked off maybe once or twice, and he did four, have three uh, lost fumbles, but when we needed him to, fourth and 18, he pulled off the throw that eventually won us the game. What a last drive that was. And Ramir Johnson, got to give him credit too. He was amazing all game long. 115 yards, 7.1 average. Didn't get in the end zone, but he had a bunch of big plays when we needed him to. Adrian Martinez, with all those sacks, he ended up losing 52 yards. And I don't know if he got a single positive yard on a read option or anything like that. He would just hit behind the line every single time he touched the ball. And those three fumbles, of course. Receiving, it was Samori Toure. And then Austin Allen stepping up when we needed him to as well. But Samori Toure would seem to always be open. And long of 48. Great game from him. He had one drop, but I thought he was really good today. Really, that's kind of his breakout game. He didn't really do much in the first two games, but he really stepped up today. And, I mean, the, the offensive line was not good. We knew that our offensive line is not good. We knew their defensive line was amazing. But we found a way to make it work. Four sacks given up by the offensive lineman. Eight sacks total. Defensively, huge game. Huge game for the defense. First half, I mean, for the most time, like, they couldn't stop anything. Oklahoma were doing whatever they wanted on offense. But once they got down in the red zone, the defense stiffened up. They got a couple red zone interceptions. And they got a couple red zone stops. Forced them to only get field goals. And then second half, they pretty much dominated from the start. You know, Oklahoma had that one drive where they got the touchdown. Other than that, we stopped them before they got to the 50-yard line almost every single time. What a turnaround that was. I've never seen uh, two halves that look so differently. In terms of tackles for losses, still two big tackles for losses. Robinson, two with those two sacks. He was the only one that got to the quarterback today. Two interceptions were massive. Deontay Williams, the first one. Jojo Damon with the diving interception with the second one. What a game that was. That was amazing. And then for Oklahoma, for the most part, I thought Caleb Williams looked really good. I mean, his accuracy looked pretty good for the most part. Just those two interceptions are really the only thing that held him back. I mean, he's only he's good running the ball too. Like he was a threat in everything he did. Through the air on the ground. Had 52 yards rushing on nine attempts. Well, Brooks, I thought we held him in check pretty well. Like he had a couple big runs, a long of 17, but. We were hitting him behind the line of scrimmage a lot. Uh, receiving, we, they were out there, number one. He stepped up, 10 receptions, 88 yards, 46 for Brooks, 33 for Woods. I mean, i got to be pretty happy with that defensive performance. 
I didn't know what to expect. Oklahoma's offense is amazing, but they really stepped it up. For defensively for Oklahoma, I had quite a few tackles for loss. Four for Jalen Redmond with two sacks. Prairie on Winfrey, their defensive tackle got three sacks. Isaiah Thomas got two. Their best defensive end. It's not even Kelly. Where's the other guy? Don't they have a guy that's even better than that? The other right end. Benito, he didn't get anything. Two tackles, one tackle for loss, no sacks. That's surprising. No interceptions. That was huge. We only turned the ball over on the fumbles. If it wasn't for that, we probably would have won comfortably. What a game. Two forced their fumbles. Two by Isaiah Thomas. He was a force. Winfrey, also a force. And of course, they got every single one of them. At halftime, I think Oklahoma had 250 yards of total offense to our 40. And yet we end up with Oklahoma 332. We get 302. Just a massive second half. 81 yards on the ground and 221 through the air. For the majority of the rushing game, other than that one drive, it didn't really do much. But, you know, it kept them having to think about it. You know, they couldn't just go all out for the pass. They they did a lot of run blitzes. They really focused on stopping the run. You know, they forced Adrian Martinez to beat him through the air. And for a while, it didn't look like he was going to until he did. That might be the greatest game of NCAA Football 14 I've ever seen. Just the highs and lows. Nebraska's offense in the first half looked completely incapable of playing the sport. And the second half, they came alive. And they got in the end zone when they got into the red zone. And we won. We beat Oklahoma 2018. How we are 3-0, I do not know. We could very easily be 0-2, 0-1, or 1-2 right now, I mean. But we're 3-0. And, and we've got FCS team next. I really want to see the offense go get into their rhythm now. I thought we had that game afterwards just kind of lick our wounds after we get smashed by Oklahoma. But now we just use it to celebrate. You know, we just beat Oklahoma. Now we can smash an FCS team. I wouldn't expect our next game to come anywhere close to matching this one. Really, it shouldn't. FCS Midwest shouldn't even be in the game. But, yeah, we get to see our offense hopefully in full strength. Hopefully, you know, firing on all cylinders for the entire game, hopefully. Hopefully, we can put up some good points. We've not put up more than 25 points so far this season. Our offense has not been great, but our defense has kind of been up and down. But when they've needed to step up, they've stepped up. And that's what's made the difference. And we're 3-0. and So, I'll see you next time for FCS Midwest. I'll need a few days to settle down. My adrenaline levels are through the roof right now. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.